say I'd like to get ready for it and stuff, I was listening to a bit of the old um, the Sam throwing incident and shit, and like I said, it was filling me with such rage. You've no idea, like oh I, yeah, oh my god. I <laughs> don't know how you, know, you do you know it. Funny? You know what's funny about that is every mm. once in a while, like somebody will find that video and they'll ask me about it, <laughs> and they'll, they'll just be like, "How come you didn't murder him?" Yeah. And I was like, I just I had so much riding on mm. not doing anything. Sure, sure. Th- that like now looking back, I should have just literally murdered him. At the very least, <laughs> you you wait outside of the serious offices and just <laughs> just go, "Hey Sam," as he's fucking sprinting towards his car. And he, you know, you he... know what's funny? <laughs> you know what's funny that you say that is mm. my my brother and I. He like my brother is my my older brother. I don't know if you have an older brother or not, but no, he was extremely protective of me, and he was like, "I'll just wait outside." <laughs> Like he, 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 I almost had a hit out on him at one point. Oh my god, it's the it's it's where Sam like um I think he throws something and then uh, I think Anthony mentions something like uh like oh Pat you, what what are you gonna do what are you gonna do Pat and uh, like that like egging you on obviously doing what he's supposed to do I guess and then you oh, just yeah. he, you just hear Sam go like yes yeah, it's, it's funny that Pat thinks I'm gonna listen to him above OP and it's just like you little worm like yeah. Oh my god, because that plays and, into like the sycophantic OP thing as well as the just being a little shit stirry kind of, It's like every. It was all of his worst traits just like exploding into one moment. It really, really annoyed me. I can't imagine and I, to you. It, like I said to you yesterday, you know, I know that it was a bit. I know mm. that we were doing a show. I know the whole thing. Yeah. But it's just like. For me, I was always able to step out of the moment and then, like, be like, "Am I really affecting someone?" Right. And like, right, what well, right. he should have seen that this was like real for me. Yeah, absolutely. you know, and it, it, it's just like it's just one of those things. Like, like Opie, like I know that Opie was like in charge of it. And him and I to this day still have a good relationship, and he actually apologized to me for that situation. Wow. Like, like quite a while ago, and. Him and I have totally put that's water under the bridge at this point because mm. you know I understand where he was coming from, right, and then okay. there was, the, but no, there's there's still like you know the, the, Sam never said anything about it, of course. No, of course not. I mean, yeah. To him, the the thing that I th- that would probably fill me with a bit of venom is is the idea that as Sam's doing it, you know that there's animosity there from him, and he's seeing he's not like just doing it as a bit for the radio. He's doing it because he's trying to get under your skin. Like there's a motivation as, a motivational aspect to, to it as well. That's that's deeper than just a goof for the radio. That's something that's that's really there's there's something more there. And it, even as a well, listener, I, you could tell. Yeah, you know, I don't want to. Um, this might sound egotistical or arrogant, mm. but I thought I think that Sam saw me as a bit of a threat. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's where I'm getting at, yeah. Because, you know, like I came, like he went to college for four years to get Mm. where he was, and I just pulled off a stunt in order to get to the same place (laughs) where he was. Yeah. And, you know, and the reason that I did that stunt was because I simply had to. Mm. And it it was just like, this is where, this is what I need to do to get where I want to be at this moment in my life. Absolutely. And I had to do what I had to do. And then I, you know, and I would get there and I, and, you know, I would be, I, I would be a helpful person and I would try and help other people mm. and I would always be there. Like, you know, people always say like, oh, you're always down for whatever. Like, I just was the type of person that just never said no to anything. Yeah. Regardless, yeah. regardless of how I felt about it truly inside. Like, did I ever, did I really want to brush my teeth with dog shit? No. No. You know but, what I mean? But, but like, like, that's where you know the, what? that's where like a reverence um, for people like you and, and even like Eastside Dave to a degree as well. Like, there, there is reverence from the fan. There was definitely a reverence because it was, you guys were really willing to do anything, and and you you were you were yes, it was like yes and it was like an improv where it's like yes and and stuff and people, and there's a big distinction between those kinds of people that that are just like ready to go for the show, and then people like Sam that that are playing a game that and throughout the enti- oh, Sam's yeah. entire tenure, it was very clear to the audience that and to the listenership that he was just playing the game, he was stirring the pot, and to some degree, many people liked that, many people liked his shit stirry things until it got to the point where he was using it to get ahead and then i mean i don't know if you've been on the subreddit a lot but the the turnaround on sam has been um, has been one of the one of the big points on i the, started on the subreddit. i i discovered i discovered the subreddit maybe six months ago oh wow and that's what that's when i that's when i because i had always i you know, like you know i'm not very i'm not very into technology and, and i'm not mm. i'm just not into the whole scene like i used to be and then you know, t- and to be honest with you in a really weird way 
Hmm. I probably almost can blame it on my experience with the show as to why I kind of reverted back to just right, like right. not really giving a shit about things like pop culture and technology and all that stuff because I was at towards the end I was so angry at everything like I just mm. kind of reverted back to everything but I discovered the subreddit maybe six months ago and that's when I was telling you yesterday like I was looking at like they're ripping everybody apart and I was like oh they can't have anything on me and I searched <laughs> my name and it was like wow yeah you know <laughs> and they're going after like like they're posting pictures of my wife and like going after oh, wow. my wife and I was just like I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I, you know, like, I haven't seen I, that, I but that's, believe it. Yeah, that's that's above the pale, I think. And um, yeah, I think that. Uh, I mean, I've I've been on there for like about about five years now, and I'm reg sort of a regular poster uh, to some degree. But um, from what I've seen, whenever you get mentioned, it's overwhelmingly positive in context in context to the to the remaining of the, the people involved. Uh, there right. is there are still a, I mean, there's obviously the untouchables, the Collins, and uh, a couple of people that just yeah, never get any shit. But as far as people that were involved on the show, I mean, you compare you to Danny, like it's it's night and day, like. Uh, oh yeah. People think of you as kind of like a, just a lovable kind of like yes guy as someone who, um, and and I think the Sam thing went a long way to 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 getting people like me especially uh, to to be right. kind of very um, to have a, almost like a little affection towards what you did on the radio because. And I, uh, I also that... <laughs> think that people. You no, know, I think that people could like, uh, on some sort of level, I, I felt that they could relate to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I, you were the I everyman that, that, that got in there. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that, you know, and, and, and like not like the, not like the rest of the guys were like snobs mm. or anything, but you know, I, I was the guy that just put myself out there, and I ended up getting the job. Yeah, and you know, and people, and like, like we would like that was in the time when they were doing the traveling virus shows, right, and like right. they were doing the animation festivals, they were doing live shows, and I would go, mm. and I would just walk through the crowd, and everybody would say hello to me, and everybody would talk to me, <laughs> and and I would get like like 99% positive response from people that I would speak to and then I would like go to work the next day and Sam would be like you're stupid <laughs> you, you know what I mean and it was like yeah. oh okay oh yeah there's still that guy yeah, Danny said the same thing uh, Danny said the same thing yes I spoke to Danny uh, yesterday and he said the same thing that there's this like elitist um, uh, split between some of the people involved in the show that were just like people like you and uh and I think Danny included himself in that. And he said that there were like this almost like elitist, like Fan and Sam, especially where they, you know, oh yeah, brought up in a nice kind of probably probably brought up in the suburbs, somewhere really nice. That went to school, went to did the you know did broadcasting school, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. that there was a big split between them. And and I think like again, as as a member of the uh, of the listenership, I absolutely preferred you for many reasons. And one of them was the fact that. It, I felt myself represented more there. I, um, I think a lot of the listeners probably felt themselves more repre represented because here's this kind of goofy guy that's that's involved in the show that's kind of like doing funny, wacky shit that they would probably do as well, like <laughs> push come to show. Well, you know, it's funny, man. I, I appreciate you saying that. Because like, mm. it's like, you know, we're 10, 12 plus years removed from this at this point. Like, yeah. I, I honestly look back on that and I don't even know that guy anymore, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. But like, you know, and but to hear you say that, it's like, oh, you know, I, I really do appreciate that, and no, it cool. makes me feel good about the things that I did, and you know, like, it's just like I like I couldn't have a more different life now, yeah, and it, it's and I never, it's a life that I never imagined having to begin with, and it's it's like, and now looking back, I can't even imagine living that life that I used to, at all. Like I, I I'm much, I feel that I'm in a much better place now. Mm. But to hear to hear you say stuff like that is just it's very it's very reassuring of the entire thing. And speaking of Danny, was that mm. the, the, is he the one that popped up yesterday on the chat? Yeah, yeah, we we um. Oh, that is him. Okay, yeah, that Pancakes House podcast. That that is Danny. Yeah. Because to um, be honest with you, I, I to be honest with you, I never felt that Danny likes me. <laughs> that's weird so. to say that. I I I brought you because um. I was a bit apprehensive. I didn't know how to get you both sort of to do these things, so I just figured like a, a Discord server. I'll, I'll bring you both in. We'll do it in two different stages. So I'll do Danny, and then I'll, right. might, I'll do you or whatever, or vice versa. And um, and one of my questions to Danny was that um, I was like, yeah, that, I mean, I've got Pat here. So I don't know whether or not you and Pat are like on you're okay or, or anything. And he, and he actually said that he liked he liked you, and he said that um, that uh, you were you were one of the good ones on there, and that uh, well, yeah, I mean, I know that, and that, that's. That's nice to hear. Danny to me was like, 
there was a couple different groups. Like there was, it was very clicky, and yeah. there was there was o, OP guys and Anthony guys. Right. And I I fell in with the OP guys. Like I was real close with Eric. Oh yeah. And I was real close with I don't know if you remember a guy named Wild Bill. Wild Bill, yeah. We talked about him yesterday. I was I was close with him. I was close with Steve. And then there was Anthony guys. So it was Danny. There was mm. Travis, Sam. Right. Like those were guys that, you know, I, I, like I was as nice as I could possibly be to, and helpful as I could possibly be to them. Mm-hmm. But I never, I never tried to make it any anything more than that. Yeah, and that's, you know, I, I kept it professional. That was the interesting thing as well talking to Danny about it because he um, he comes from a very different pers- perspective as uh, as you on Sam. I mean. He was he, he gave me some very very good insight as far as um, some of Sam's uh, especially uh, his sycophantic attitude towards OP and and the the idea that perhaps OP uh, his relationship to OP was was kind of manufactured in a way to give him a, a bit of a boost in uh, in right. serious so he, he was very very open in in that sort of sense but he he didn't come from a place of animosity he 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 was very much of a uh, of the mind of like well you know sam that's what sam was doing it's 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 up to him if he does if he wanted to go that way that's fine he was very very kind of like um open but i think i was more i guess this is why i was more interested in talking to you is because i i have certain preconceptions as do many listeners of of what sam's real nature is and it's not a, i don't think he's a very good person for many reasons right. and i think i no, think I seeing think seeing how he how he acted with you i think really enlightened me to, to elements of his personality that that really were kind of toxic to me that i really didn't like like seeing in a person and i certainly don't like seeing in in people i know like i hate i hate to say it even like this but i i think that one of the myriad of reasons why Steve C took his own life, mm-hmm. I, I think I, I, you know, I don't want to say it was Sam's fault, but right. I, I would say that amongst the millions of other things that a man who's going to kill himself has on their mind, hmm. I don't think Sam was helpful to the process. Yeah, and was... spe- like the way that Sam would act to Steve back, mm-hmm. you know, behind the scenes and when things were off and when the show was over and in between breaks. Yeah. It was disgusting. And it was here's a guy who's the executive producer who in all in all intents and purposes is the boss. He's in right, charge. Right. And you got a guy like Sam who just would literally almost refuse to treat him with any type of respect. And you know, anytime Steve would talk, it was, "Oh, okay, good. We'll get to that." And Steve would leave the room and Sam would be like, mm-hmm. "We're not doing that. That's stupid." And it, wow. and it was just like, and I and I remember, you know, like I said, I came from a background where like I didn't go to college to do this. I came from a working background. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, that's the guy in charge. We have to do that, right? You know, and it's and it's just it was like, no, nope, no, nope, it's not. It's just it's not how it worked with Sam. He's just a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with Steve, I, I was um, I was a, a bit sort of. Um... On, on like either side of whether or not to, to bring him up in at, at all because obviously when you're talking about what happened with Steve you, it's it's very sort of a delicate thing and also it's it's a case that uh, you know you don't want to be too speculative but obviously you do have that that window into this world that we don't have so absolutely I mean you saying that is, is very very interesting and I think that um, if, you, if you think of, of things like suicide I think that your work relationships and your you spend so much time at work and especially in a job like radio where you're so immersed oh, yeah. in it you spend so much time around these people that if the people around you are negative influences to your to your enjoyment then that can't help it's like you said like, absolutely I'm not, not. not going to say it, it, it was a, a big factor in it I'm sure there were big personal demons that, that he had to deal with but I, th- right. I think when you go into work and the people that you work with provide a, a really negative environment it, it like you said it absolutely doesn't help yeah, and he, like in you're right because, like I said, I don't want to say that you know Steve did it because of Sam, but it just mm. didn't help. Absolutely, you know, yeah. and and I, I I was I was literally, you know, I was elbow deep in that environment for close to three and a half, almost four years. Right, and it was like, it was the greatest job in the world, and then mm. at the same time, it was the single most stressful thing I've ever been a part of. <laughs> like and like you know it, I don't. It's, it's hard to describe but it, it's just it, it was the greatest and worst thing at the same time i did like the way you said uh, yesterday how um 
it was a it's just a very unique and interesting way to spend your early 20s which i think uh oh yeah oh absolutely i, I mean, think when you uh, when you remember it from you know years years down the line i think you can definitely probably grow more of a fondness than than remember and obsess over the the negatives of you it know, so. you know what it is you, you know it's funny you say that because like there's there's a couple things that point out in my mind that were like mm. extremely positive experiences that came from that and like right, right. I, I didn't at, at the time i didn't like collect a lot of stuff like i didn't like interns weren't allowed to take pictures with guests and things like that sure so i what i used to do is like my thing was i want i i was known that i never messed up a food order i know as minor as that sounds mm -hmm. So I like took a lot of pride in meeting all these celebrities and getting them their breakfast. Yeah, no. So I, like, I so like one thing, one one of my favorite thing was, I met Buzz Aldrin, the guy that walked on the moon, the second mm. man to walk on the moon, and I actually asked Steve if I could take a picture with him, and it was one of the only times I ever got a picture with any guest. And it's like, you know, how often do you get your picture taken with a guy yeah. that walks on the moon? No, definitely. And that's... Uh, that's one of the that's one of the only pictures that I actually have hanging in my house. Wow. And, and, and it's like one of those things where I'm like, oh yeah, that was that was a good day right there, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's a snapshot of of that time, and and I mean, yeah, yeah I I, I know from I I work in uh, TV broadcasting, um, doing sort of like Premier League games and things like that, so I understand as far right. as like when you uh, when you're dealing with talent. Um, it's 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 not just it's not just a a little th it's not just a small thing to go out and get them what they want and stuff. It's it's a very because the, the the runners in in where where I work, um, when they get food of talent or when they they're they're dealing with talent's needs and things like that, um, yeah, you fuck up once and someone else is doing your job. Like it's it's that oh, kind yeah, of yeah. cut or dry. 100%. So, so it's, and, it's you know, and we had such a high profile guest like Buzz Aldrin and his mm, wife. Right, I was right. immediately trusted to get their breakfast. And my favorite part about it is years later, is both. Buzz Aldrin and his wife got two mm. large black coffees and bran muffins. Okay. And my long, my long-standing joke with that was that space makes you constipated, <laughs> and you can't, and he can't shit, so they have large coffees and bran muffins. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a dumb joke, I know, but still, <laughs> I'm sure you appreciate it though. So, um, what were your, um, what, we'll go through some of the questions. So, what were your first impressions oh, yeah, yeah. of of Sam as as an intern though? Like when when he first arrived, I mean. I'm guessing there wasn't an immediate animosity, but but what did you think of him when he first? I mean, well, obviously, I'd, I'm not sure of the timeline was, but like, what was your first impression when you met Sam? Let's just say that my first my first impressions of Sam because I met everybody that first day mm. during the eggnog drinking contest. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was at the time I was just a listener, and I was I I met everybody, and everybody was pretty positive and. I was coming up with this crazy idea and we were going through the motions of the eggnog challenge and it culminated with the baby bird. So <laughs> at the time, baby bird, you know, the baby bird finishes mm. and here I am thinking that, you know, I just did something pretty crazy and it was a positive thing for the show and these guys are going to like me. Right. And, you know, this is going to work out. You know, Opie says he's our new intern. This is it. I got the gig. I'm in. Mm. And here I am thinking, okay, cool. This is going to work out, you know? And I met most of the guys that day and they were all nice. And, and you know, they were, they were decent people to me and I was totally sure. okay with it. And me being a guy like grew, I grew up in the woods. Like everybody, I, the 99% of the people I met were nice people. Mm. So I, I, you know, I meet all these guys and they're cool. Fast forward a month or so. And then I, I get to the show and I start working and immediately it was a different situation. So for you ask my first impression of it, I'd say it was misleading right. because you got two different sides to him. You got the side where, okay, I'm on the outside. This is a nice guy. I can see where people think he's funny. I can see where people would like him. Now I'm on the inside. Wait, this guy is not what he seems to be. Mm. He is, he's not a nice person. <laughs> he is always looking for an angle. He's wow. always looking for a way to make you the butt of the joke. Right, yeah. And, and he's he's not genuine to you at all. And he he especially struck me as that. Most of the other guys were pretty nice. I mean, you got mm. a guy like Than who like really just kind of seemed indifferent to the whole thing. Danny was on his own thing and then Eric, me and Eric got along basically from the get-go. Mm. But Sam himself was just you could tell you know, he was always looking for an angle. 
There was mm. never a straight. There was never a straight. Just hey, I'm Sam. I'm here to help. It was never like that. It got to the point, um, from my perspective, that in every situation he he felt that, especially uh, not necessarily competing with the on-air people, but when it comes to behind the scenes thing, he had this aura of him where he felt like he was the smartest person in any conversation with with all the with with fellow interns or or, or production staff or or um, and it, it it did seem to be this this level of like. Um, uh, elevation. He felt like he was elevated above them. Perhaps a lot of it was due to the fact that he was probably around interns that didn't go to broadcast school or whatever. But he definitely felt like that. So on that basis, was was Sam well liked by his fellow interns and production staff? Would you say or? Well, I see. When I started, I never interned with Sam. Sam was always uh, what they call an associate producer at mm. the time when I started. Yeah. So, but my like my crop of interns that I had started with were guys that had already been there for a while and right. they they honestly were along almost along the same type of guys like sam oh, they were kind of looking for the angle and they were looking for you know they were looking for they were looking to make people the butt of jokes but which is the reason why those are guys that they did a semester or two and then they were not they were not asked back right now right. as time went on and i put more time in and you would have kids come in that were like not necessarily fans of the show, which was another big thing. Like you say that like he, he acts like the smartest guy in the room. Mm -hmm. You would have people that would come in and they would just get this internship, not necessarily knowing what the show was and what it was about. And it was like a hyena. Like it was like it was like a hyena taking on a gazelle <laughs> because he could just tell that he did that you didn't get the gist of the show. Right, so he would right. jump all over it. And oh, one of wow. Sam's favorite things to do would be to listen to somebody's someone asked him a question and someone voiced their concern about something he would look at him as if he was you know totally sympathetic and compassionate to what they were saying and then he would skip a beat and just say god you're so stupid <laughs> and and it and it was like the first couple of times i had heard it it was like are you serious wow. like this guy's coming to you for help like are you really being this way mm. and you know it got to a point where i would tell all new interns to just avoid sam Mm. Just, I, I would say, if you need a real, if you need a question answered, come to me, come to Eric, come to, come to anybody but Sam. He really reminds me. There's a, uh, I mean, this is not going to sound. This is totally left field, but I, I worked with a guy that sounded exactly like him. And I remember when I first started. At, um, so I used to work at like an outside broadcasting company where um, we, 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 we basically set broadcast trucks, trucks up ready for, uh, for, for, for live shows and stuff. So I'd right. go. I started at this place, and I, I didn't. I, I kind of had a background in like the stuff I knew, but I didn't really. Um, I, I, didn't, I didn't really know like how what I knew could be applied in in a sort of a professional broadcast environment. And I, I went to this guy plenty of times to try and get some help and things like that. And he he reacted in a very Sam Roberts esque way. It was all like, um, "What are you stupid?" or like that kind of things, or like really really kind of like mocking, a condescent, a lot of condescension, a lot of um, yeah. He would he would frame the the answer to make him look smart or to make him look. Oh, of course. So you, eventually you you realise that there are other people you can probably ask that same question to, and you're probably not oh, going to yeah. get that response. And um, uh, yeah, like you know, it, um, I'm glad you said the word condescending because that I hadn't come to my mind, but that's the perfect mm. way to describe it. Yeah, it's just it's it's condescension in its purest form. Mm. It, it it's just it's mind boggling, really. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, I, th I think I can skip the what was your personal relationship with Sam like initially. I think uh, it's pretty, pretty obvious there. But um, so <laughs> well, just just to touch on that. I oh mean, yeah, yeah, go ahead. My my personal relationship with Sam just started out as like you know I hate to say like I was like a wide eyed kid in the city, yeah, just trying to find some help. And then I, it took it, it didn't take me very long to see the real Sam Roberts. Right. It, it didn't take me very long to realize that, you know what, this guy does not have mine or anybody's best interest in mind. The only guy that Sam Roberts is looking out for is Sam Roberts. Um, what was your, um, I mean, on the personal side of things, um, did, did you uh, ever, I mean, obviously, you, I don't think you voluntarily socialized with him, but were there occasions where perhaps like the staff would go out for a meal or, or for drinks or anything like that? Like, what was your social interactions with Sam like? Um, there was a couple times uh, where we would all go out to, I don't know if you ever heard the reference to the burger place that was right up the street on 57th Street. 
mm. um, a couple of times, like around Christmas and the holidays and stuff like that, either Opie or Anthony would offer to take the staff out to get burgers after the show and, and as like a year end type of thank you thing. Hmm. Now me, me being an intern, I survived, I survived working four days a week in New York city on $80 a week. Whoa. And I, because working a full, working as, working as many hours as I can, plus my own apartment, that was my budget. And I made it work every week. If I made, if I did it right, hmm. I had about $10 left at the end of the week. Now Jesus. me, me hearing the offer of going out to lunch, I made the mistake of asking Sam, is this on us or is he treating us? And mm. Sam literally told me that I had to pay my own way. And <laughs> he was just straight lying to me. And I guess I, I guess I was gullible or, you know, whatever you want to say. Yeah. And I just said, oh, all right, well, I'll just catch you guys next time. You know, thank you for the offer, but I can't afford oh it. Oh, my God. And then and then there and then I literally had to have Opie be like, no, we're all going out. I'm lying. And as as. You know, as minor as a thing like that is, it was embarrassing. You know, yeah, and, and it was yeah. like, oh, okay. Well, you know, Sam told me that I had to pay my own way, and then it was like, oh, Sam, rascal. You know, like, and it was mm. just like, and there's Sam. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it, and it cackle. was just like, oh, okay, great. I mean, that that's the first thing that that uh, stands out to me. But there were also times where. You know, we would go to like the traveling virus shows hmm. and, you know, and I would just walk around like I, I would bring friends of mine. I'd get them tickets and we would walk around, go to the shows and, you know, get drunk and whatever and have a good time. And then anytime I would run into guys like Sam or Travis there, there was Sam screaming, hey, look, everybody, it's Pat Duffy. It's Pat Duffy. There he is. Pay attention to him. All he wants is attention. There he what? is. And it's just like, it, yeah. And it's like, Sam, just shut up. Like, I'm just I'm just <laughs> hang, you know, like. And, you know, and there I am, like, thinking that I have to at least feign respect for this guy because uh -huh. if I don't, then I'm not going to get hired. And it, it, it's going to – so I'd have to be like, ha, 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 yeah, okay. Like, but from it, my it, perspective, it's just... it sounds like Sam had a hard-on for you. It sounds like he, he he just, like, I mean, was he like that to, to that degree? Was he like that with anyone else that you remember significantly? At least someone that was, like – on the show for a while or was it was did it almost seem like it was uh, specifically elevated See, for you i don't i don't want to say it was specifically towards me but i mean we had we had so many interns that would come and stay one semester and go there wasn't guys that stayed on for like literally close to four years like i did and mm. I, I was there week in and week out just working for free trying to make trying to make it work for me yeah and you know and and i think that he saw that and I think that he realized that he could fuck with me as much as he wanted and it wasn't going to, and nothing was going to happen to him. But we had another guy like, uh, like a guy like cream pie Jones, Jared. Mm. Um, he was, he was kind of sort of in the same boat as I was just to a lesser degree. And Sam would really mess with him a lot. Um, a guy like, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of a guy named hip hop Ron. Yeah. I remember. Uh, Ron, yeah. He, yeah, he, Ron, Ron was always a cool guy. And, he actually got along better with Sam because he was kind of more of a smart ass than me. Okay. And he got along better, but but Sam would really poke fun at him a lot too. <laughs> and it's it just, I don't know. It, it, it's just how, I guess I guess Sam Sam thought that I was tr I was probably trying to make the biggest name for myself. I guess. Right. And he would he would gravitate towards that and really single me out. The thing is with it as well is that. Um... Because a lot, of, I think a lot of listeners see that as just oh, it's just part and parcel. It's you know, Sam's just being, uh, he's just being, you know, a little bit of a shit story, a little bit. He's just trying to create something. But it all like, I can't see that without thinking that there's a motive behind it. And for me specifically, the motive is, oh, here's this Pat Duffy guy. He's he's still an intern. He's been there for like three years now, or, or have along, and um, and there's a, comp a competitive element almost to it where Sam looks at you as, as a kind of like, well, he's competing for attention with me. I'm going to specifically go out of my way to, to, to try and make sure that I'm above him or that, that, that he is, uh, that, that he's not getting the shine I'm getting. So I'm going to throw him under the bus at every turn. There was like this, this really calculated uh, element to, to how he treated you especially. And I've seen how he treats a lot of people in, in, in the same sort of way as well. Especially even on, on his new show, not not to jump to the new show thing, but if you look at the way he treats the interns on his new show, it's exactly the same. He hasn't changed one uh, one bit. Oh, I can only imagine. I, I used to look at it like almost in a, 
and I might regret saying this, but almost like in a Laurel and Hardy type situation. Mm. Like he he needed somebody to play off of. Yeah, yeah. He needed somebody to that he knew wasn't going to fight back because you know I, I hate to even admit it, but Sam is incredibly quick witted, mm. and he he's very fast. And me, I, I'm not nearly as fast as he is. Right. So and I and I would I was also not very used to the element of being live on the radio to literally millions of people. So I would I would get a little choked up and I I, I would go blank every once in a while. Mm-hmm. And it happened and there's Sam just firing off lines at me and I'm looking at him and I, I'm blank. There's almost no, and I'm so that was part of the like where I would just get so pissed. Right. Because right. he knows that he's tripping me up. He yeah. knows that he's embarrassing me. He knows that the more the fit, the faster he is, the more I'm going to trip up, and the more I'm going to hate myself later. Mm. And he, he knows it, and he and he knows because I I literally went to him one time and I was like, Sam, I don't think you really understand that. Like when you and I get into things on the air, like you you forget about it as soon as the mics are off, but like later on at night, I'm I'm like laying in bed thinking about it, and I'm like pissed about it, and I, mm. and, it, and it really affects me. And, you know, that, that was when I would try to appeal to the human side of Sam. And it just didn't work. And he would just sit there and go, oh, well, I'm sorry. You know, this is show business. Oh my! And God, this is man. what we do. And, you know, and I, I would just go, okay, Sam, you know, whatever, man. I'll, I'll try harder next time, I guess. Wow. And, and, it's, and it's just, he's... He's just really not a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting that. Um, yeah. So... As far as um, a, a big big element of it was uh, that that we we feel um, that contributed to Sam's elevation in Sirius was his relationship with Opie. Um, right. I know that you you mentioned earlier that he was one of the the Anthony guys, but I think it was definitely witness from our side. And, and Danny said this as well that that uh, Sam definitely played up to Opie, and he, he definitely uh, I don't want to use the term like brown nosed, but he def- there was definitely a sort of a sycophantic kind of a relationship to Opie. Where he would uh, he he would try his best to placate him and try his best to like get on his good side. Do you think that? Oh, yeah. uh, what was his what was your relationship to Opie like actually? Just as a broader question. Well, I mean, I mean, it's like like I brought up earlier when I was talking about Steve. Like Steve was mm. the boss behind the scenes, and then you get to right. the actual show itself, and Opie is the end all be all. He's the boss. Mm-hmm. He what what he said went, and you and in no matter what type of working environment that you have. You always have a guy that's going to be right next to the boss, mm-hmm. and Sam was that guy, and he was there, right next to the boss to the point where he worked himself up in the later years after I left to practically like fourth Mike, and he was there, and that was Sam just going, like like you brought up an improv group, yes, Ant, mm-hmm. and it was whatever Op- whatever Opie wanted, whatever Opie needed, whatever bit needed to get done, that's what was getting done, right, and right. now. To a lesser, to a lesser standpoint, I was the same way, but I did it because I wanted to make a good show. I feel that Sam did it because he wanted, he wanted, to, he was out for himself, right, right, and he wanted to just basically, he wanted to be the Sam Roberts show featuring Opie and Anthony, right, exactly, and, and he, whatever, whatever he needed to do, he was going to do, and we've we've seen it. Um... At, at times as well. I mean, I don't know if you saw the, the uh, Jim Norton documentary I, I uh, did before this. I, f- I featured on this particular subject, um, and it was it was Opie's uh, firing from Sirius, and right. uh, and I, I, I enlightened how how readily uh, able Sam was to pick up this slack and to, to fill that role immediately. Like it was uh, it was almost as if Sam had prepared for that moment his entire career, and he was minute, waiting for it. Yeah, he was, and and. Uh, I, I, I speculated because obviously at the time I didn't necessarily have any sources or information, but I did definitely speculate on the fact the fact that it wouldn't have surprised me if if Sam had been behind the scenes during the whole Opie thing, reassuring Jim of like, look, whatever happens, we can do something. Let's at least try something. I'm pretty sure Jim struck, strikes me a little bit as a not not necessarily lazy, but when it came to the show, he wasn't he wasn't driving it forward from a from a sort of management side of it he wasn't like he wasn't making those kinds of decisions he was there as a funny guy and a third mic and i think sam was that to jim uh, when when op's firing occurred i think sam was 
look Jim we can make this work here's my five point plan and it, what we'll do these test shows first see if it works and I think Jim probably just went along with it to, and, to a degree and he had that he had that five point plan written out five years prior yeah yeah and he you know Sam I think Sam envisioned in his head one day Opie and Anthony retiring and mm. legitimately passing the torch to him yeah now when that so. became clear that that wasn't going to happen I feel that he just went, well, then by any means necessary, I'm going to do this. Mm. And Anthony gets fired. There he is one step closer. Exactly. So there he is. Now he's been upgraded to third mic. And the Jim and Sam, uh, the, the Opie and Jim show breaks up. And then, bam, there's Sam. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. Mm. And, you know, I remember when Sam got the night show. Mm -hmm. And... And this is when I, 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 I listened very rarely. I listened to Opie in the afternoon when he had his afternoon show because I like Opie and I thought it, I yeah. thought it was good. I'm like one of the eight people that likes Carl. And I think like, it's kind of relatively, uh, I think, especially on the subreddit even, I think he started off people not particularly liking him very much, but I think people are kind of at least indifferent if not uh, they think that he's, uh, he's not so bad. Well, I think I, I, you know, I like the guy because he, mm. he, him, we come from like, we live in the same area, so I, I know what okay. kind of person he is. There's a lot of people like Carl around me, mm, yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, I like that being represented. But regardless, I think that Sam, I remember when Sam got the night show. I, there I was thinking that, okay, this is like Opie's way of just placating Sam, mm -hmm. and this is Opie's way of being like, here, I don't want to deal with you. You have your own show at night where I won't have to see you. Right, and right. you go do what you have to do, and then you, you see how that works out for you. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I think the Sam Roberts show at night literally didn't do anything for anybody. No, it was, and it, was uh, terrible. It, it was It was live microphones. It was literally live air commercials, live air. I, I, like, mm. I don't think it did anything for anybody. And then the moment that it blows up in the afternoon with Opie, Sam saw his shot, and he immediately went for it. Yeah, like, yeah. And, it, and, it, and in reality, you know, I, I, I think it's disgusting because, you know, like, would he jump in Opie's grave that fast? Mm. You know, and it's it's just like this man, literally handed you your career, and you're so eager to just jump all over his still warm body, and then have the balls to make fun of him at the same time. And it's also in that particular instance. I mean, Sam had his night show, and he was. I mean, I, I, I thought it, the, his show that he was doing on the night. It was unlistenable as far as I was concerned. I, it just wasn't. I wasn't the target demo at all. I don't know who is. I don't know who the show's for. Uh, but right. I, that's a whole different thing. But in at least he was he was making something himself. He was doing his own thing. And then the minute there was an a, a, there was an opportunity for him to elevate himself massively by siding with Jim and by doing a show with Jim. He just abandoned the, the 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 creation that he made all by himself and was like, he swapped that for just for just filling in Opie's shoes for just doing what Opie did a, a year before and and that to me shown a uh, showed a complete lack of like um, standing by your product and and believing in yourself. It, it was more that f fuck my product. I just want the big show. I just want the big right the, the big morning like, slot. I I can't name a single bit from the Sam Roberts Night Show. But I guarantee not a single one of them came over to the morning show. No, no. The morning show just became Opie and Jim with Sam instead of Opie. It was the same formula right. as that, except more wrestlers. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> with wrestlers, ridiculous. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, your relationship with, with, G uh, with, with Sam... Um, was it very, very quickly in that, that the turning point happened of, okay, you, you the realization of you going, this is a bad guy, or was it more of a gradual? It was, um, I don't, let me gather my thoughts on this one, because it's, it's, more, it's hard more to clearly, was, was there a specific moment that you remember early on in, in uh, your career there that, that really was a defining moment in how you felt towards Sam? You know what? It's funny that you bring that up, because there was a moment... Eastside Dave got married at the Hard Rock. Mm -hmm. And there was a blanket invitation for everybody that worked there. Right. And I had every full intention of going. And I was going to go and I was going to, you know, just hang out in the back and enjoy the show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and that's it. And I remember it was like towards the end of the show and Sam asked me, are you going? 
And I said, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go after the show. I'm done with my work. Mm-hmm. He goes, did you bring a change of clothes? I said, I said, no, I'm just going to go like this. He goes, you're going to go in what you're wearing. Oh, wow. Don't you have any class or respect for yourself? <laughs> it's a wedding. He goes, it's a wedding. You have to wear a suit. It's what like are you Dave. doing? And I, I remember, I remember kind of being taken back by it. Now this isn't, a, this isn't when I'm still in a present mind of like, oh well, maybe you know, maybe he's right. Right. So I opted out of going, and I ended up missing it, and I ended up listening to it, and then I remember looking at pictures later on from like whack bag mm. and li- everybody there is in t-shirts and jeans <laughs> and i just remember like being kind of taken back by it like you know this guy just straight lied to me mm. he, he didn't want me there and he, he just he made up a lie made me feel bad about myself in order for me to just go home and he didn't want me there and i i remember that there may have been other incidents, but that's the one that pops out in my brain as right. like, fuck this guy. That's actually perfect because it fits a lot into the uh, the thing at the burger restaurant as well in, in that Sam would lie to you. And I think, I think there is a reason for it. I think it's that Sam sees opportunities to socialize with upper management as if it's a rare thing. It's, it's in, and socialize with like Anthony and Opie and that. Um, as a rare thing, and he doesn't want somebody else watering down his exposure to to opium. And, and like, if he sees you there as well, um, his attention during the entire thing is watered down even further. So I think it was, I think with the burger thing where he lied to you about that, saying that uh, you have to pay for yourself, um, and he did that in order. F- I mean, people can say, oh no, it was just it was just fucking with you for a little. It's, that's just Sam, but he did it for a reason. He didn't want you there. The same with the wedding thing. He didn't want you there, and he didn't want you there for a reason because. He wanted he wanted uh, FaceTime with with the with with the talent. He wanted FaceTime right. with the talent, and he didn't want you to get that FaceTime with the talent because he saw you. And as I a wasn't even I wasn't even the type of guy to like go to a live event and seek out the guys. I just went and mm. hung out. But he you was, know? and he and, he assumes that you're like him. Oh yeah, and oh, um, don't ever compare me to Sam. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, right. but it's just it's one of those. No, sorry, it's just one of those things. It's like, you know, I, I would just go, and I just wanted to go for the experience, hmm. and I, I and I wanted to go just to be like, oh, I went to, Sam, to Sam, uh, Dave's wedding. Mm-hmm. You know, I did that, and we went to I went yeah, I, 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 like so the twenty years from now, I can say I went to a wedding at the Hard Rock Cafe, hmm. and then, but he made me feel literally bad about myself to the point where I was like you're right I am a piece of shit for not bringing a suit I'm not mm. going to go and I guess part of that is on me you know part of, part of that is on my own personality of not saying you know what Sam go fuck yourself I'm going to go but you know that's just who I am and at the time yeah you were younger just, and more that, impressionable that, at the time like it's, that's there's no yeah. apologies for that I, th- I think we've all been in yeah. situations where we've looked at a, um, an authority whether it be a, a, someone at work or, or someone like that um and yeah we, we you know we've, we've we've been fairly perhaps been fairly naive but for good reason because we're young we're impressionable we we don't necessarily know that that people are out there to get you in that sort of uh, in that sort of way and and you, you you also have implicit trust in that people are generally good and that people are generally right. they generally do things to try and help you. You don't realize that there are people like Sam out there that are so self orientated and so interested in their own success that they will stamp over you to get there. Sam was one of my earliest examples in my life of really teaching me to almost second and triple guess somebody. Mm. Because right off the bat Sam seems like a friendly person. Seems like a guy that, you know, is, here's here's a funny, quirky guy that, you know, he might be able to help me here. And then right. you, you take that, and then it, then you get taken advantage of, mm-hmm. and that, and then you end up feeling like the giant piece of shit at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And you realize that while you're feeling like a piece of shit, he won. Yeah, yeah. So, it, and all that does is make you feel worse. So as I got older and took these lessons it was one of my first times in my life where i really learned to triple guess people and mm. i i feel that now as as a much older adult that i feel that i'm much better at reading people 
yeah, in, in a weird way, it's, it's a good lesson to, to go through. If you can find somebody like that early on in your life, it's going to save you a lot of headache later on when you uh, come across that kind of a person over and over and over again. So did you see that, um, the example with the with the wedding, um, can you think of any uh, ex uh, other examples that, uh, perhaps where other people, that, that happened to other people where Sam perhaps might have like lied to like get them not to be in places or, or where he's kind of like manipulated the situation to favour himself? Is there, I mean, probably asking you to remember a, a, a long way back, but are there any other examples of that that you can think of? To, to be honest with you, like, not, I really can't think of anything off the top of my head. And not, not mm. to say that it didn't happen. Right. And not to say that I wasn't even a witness to it, but it's just, I, I kind of, I kind of just remember the stuff that happened to me. Of course. Yeah. It's but, and I, you know, and I also, I, but I do remember, like, I remember when, when we were in the, in the midst of that, the summer where, we, where everybody played with shit mm -hmm. and it was like me and cream pie Jones. And I remember like taking Jared, who was cream pie Jones, mm -hmm. like off to the side. And I remember being after he did the duty hat and all that stuff. I said, "You don't have to do this." Mm. I, I said, "I know that you're. I can tell that you're incredibly uncomfortable with this. I can tell that you are basically being forced into doing this." Mm -hmm. I said, "You don't have to do it." And I remember him looking at me and just being like, "I don't have a choice." Mm. And I, I said, "Listen, the only thing we have in life as humans is choice. You don't have to do this." And there, you know, and he was like, he was trying to get on getting really good with Sam, and he was oh, trying to have like o almost like go under like have Sam take him under his wing, and I know that he was like, I don't want to say forced, but he would felt incredibly heavily influenced into doing all that stuff that he did, because it was almost like Sam dangling over his head. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you can be my friend afterward. <laughs> Wow. And you know, and it it, play, it it culminated with uh, Sam when Sam and Isai Dave had their own short-lived show. Mm -hmm. it, it culminated with Jared being like their personal chauffeur, and he used to drive them, <laughs> oh, and he damn. used to run errands for them. And I remember when that was going on, and I would message him and be like, "What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, like, how is you that don't helping need to do him? this." Yeah, I, I said, "You don't need to do this." <laughs> And I, you know, I don't understand why you feel the need to do this. And you know, he was just like, "Oh, well, it might help," you know. And then I remember I, I, I left Sirius, mm -hmm. and like I, I went quite a long time without speaking to anybody because I had a lot of anger at the end right, over right. the way that I was separated from Sirius. And uh, I remember Jared reached out to me and was like, "You were right. You were right the whole time." It never ever culminated in anything. Yeah, because it's, it's it's not in Sam's interest to elevate you to to near his level. Why would he ever do that? Why? Right. But at the time, you're young and impressionable, and you're you're you 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 see Sam getting these opportunities early on in his career, and you think, yeah, that can happen to me. Maybe if I just maybe if I do the same thing Sam Sam did, and maybe if I like, but. The thing is, once people get to those levels, they don't they they don't want to let them go, and they don't want somebody more potentially more talented or deserving to to take that opportunity from them. And yeah, Sam's I mean Sam's whole career has been and Danny said this very well yesterday. He said that Sam got to where he was because he stayed in the seat. He stayed in that seat, and he didn't right. let anyone else uh, anywhere near it. He he just right. It was it was like uh, being at a poker table and, and winning because you just stuck it out. You just sat there until right. everybody else dropped out, and then the, soon enough, Anthony's gone, Opie's gone, and uh, he's doing a show with Jim, and uh, he's took the morning. So, yeah, um, I just don't under I don't understand how the guy can feel any, any way good about what he's done, and like, how do you go to work in the morning, and you sit there across from Jim, and now I I don't have anything against Jim. <laughs> what I don't have anything against Jim at all. And I, I don't see how you can sit there and feel good about yourself and knowing that you literally climb the ladder by stabbing people in the back. And, and it, it just makes no sense to me. It's almost, like, um, I mean, I, I, I can see these behaviors as being sociopathic. I mean, do you think he's a sociopath? Oh, he, or? He's the definition of a sociopath. And he, he, he is the reason why I learned what a sociopath is. And because I I was so stressed out and so so upset and pissed off and I couldn't believe that I had this dream job and I had this dream opportunity and I got to deal with a guy like this 
Mm. And I, I got I to gotta deal with a guy that no matter how good I feel, he can knock me down in two seconds. And I, I remember like, I, you know, the primitive days back then, there was no social media or whatever. I would like look, Google this, mm-hmm. like how he would act towards me. And I would look it up and I would, and I, that's how I, I that's the, how I learned what a sociopath is. Here's a quick example of, of Sam's condescension and attitude towards people is mm-hmm. I, I, one time I was, I was bullshitting with Sam in the, the intern room at K rock mm-hmm. and it was just me and him. And you know, every once in a while, like, you know, I don't know if you like every once in a while, Sam and I would get along. Right. And you know, and I, and there I am thinking, Oh, maybe I step forward with this guy. But I remember asking Sam, what did you go to college for exactly? And he said, Oh, I went for sociology and I, and me being, like I, I had no idea what sociology was. As stupid as that sounds, hmm. I, I didn't know what it was. And I said, "Well, what is sociology?" And then you want to talk about being mocked and ridiculed right. and made to feel stupid. And I, I, it was like one of those things where I just I saw the switch flip in Sam and go, "Oh, here's an opportunity to make fun of this kid." Yeah. yeah. Oh, perfect. He finally said the thing that I needed in order for, in order for me to attack him. <laughs> it's just like you know and it's dumbass me i didn't know mm. what sociology was at the time because i was 22 and from the country yeah <laughs> like I, I didn't know you know <laughs> absolutely yeah <sighs> why would you um, to, what, did, talking about sam. what did sam reply though when you you asked what sociology was did he, did he give you a straight answer or was he, uh... he no he laughed at me oh okay. he laughed at me and told me that i wasn't smart enough to understand and then if I if I had got if I had gone this long in my life without knowing what it was, then I don't ever need to know what it is. Dude, I mean, that, in Britain that would be classed as a BA, a Bachelor of Arts. I mean, I studied a BSc, um, a, a science degree. So uh, his degree is laughable to to people that I went to university with. Right. So the fact that he's he's there on his high ledge, looking down at you because you didn't do sociology, it's not yeah. a real subject. It really isn't. What a f- what an it oh my god like every when I first decided I was going to do the Sam one I've, I've done two so far I've done a Joe Matarese one because he's one of my favorite people of all time he's so right um uh, so I did I did Joe Matarese and then um, people really liked it really seemed to do well so uh, they they wanted another one and uh, Jim Norton I still have a soft spot for Jim Norton but you can't ignore a lot of the funny things that have happened in and around his life so I, I figured he's he's going to be a good story to do plus. Beige Frequency was doing the, the Anthony Cumia one, which has been unbelievable. If you ever get time, I know you, you're a busy I watched, man, but I watched the first I watched the first episode of it, and I I, I cannot wait to get into, into the rest oh of it. Oh my god, he just released he released the fifth one tonight, and it's all on Joe Cumia. It's all on the um, if oh you, if you've been around the, the subreddit, it's all about the People's Court appearance, the um, yeah 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 the U2 thing. It's it's you know, you know absolutely what, you know fantastic. What's amazing, uh, you know what's amazing about this this subreddit is mm. it's taken it's it's taken uh, I guess the word trolling uh, to <laughs> infinite levels. It really and has to the to the fact where people like such as yourself mm-hmm. are putting together these professional grade documentaries <laughs> in order to make fun of somebody mm-hmm. and to put out the and put out the, the the truth about people it's truly an amazing thing which is honestly part of the reason why the subreddit scares me and yeah. because i am just i like i don't i don't deal well with million of people ganging up on me mm. you know what i mean and i just like that's why i barely ever post on there and when i do it's like very just middle of the road mm. like i'm just like like when somebody somebody tagged me in this, they're like, "Oh, you should get Pat mm. for your thing." I was like, I, "I was like, I will help in any way I can." You know what yeah, I mean? I think like, um, I just... from my experience with the, with the subreddit, I think you have to you still have to give them a reason to to get you and to, to I mean, right. I've been posting things on there for for a while now. I used to, I used to do this joke podcast, this Matt Arise podcast that did all right, and and there was there was obviously a large portion of people that hated it and just mm. wanted me and as long as you're okay sort of forgetting what the word faggot means then you kind of <laughs> you can kind of do okay and and again i think it is a case that you really have to go out of your way to do something that uh to, to get them at you um a good well, example you know of, oh sorry yeah, um yeah, yeah. i was no, just go gonna ahead. say a good example of this was 
the Jim Norton documentary, I I kind of uh, I was getting a bit like lethargic with it and a bit like tired because like, it was like six thousand words I wrote out, and I, I was reading some of the things and they weren't, didn't sound funny enough, and I needed somebody to like help punch up the jokes a little bit. So I knew this right. really funny guy from the sub and from Discord, and he's he goes by the name the alias Bick Bickerson. He's a big fat boisterous belligerent american guy just funny as shit he's one of the funniest people i've ever met so we sat in we sat in uh, voice chat for for a good like few days and um he was going through my script and he was like yeah use this instead of this yeah use he's the one actually that that decided it'd be funny to introduce bob kelly as fat piece of shit bob kelly like, it, it, like <laughs> <laughs> just to like in a really clinical british way just to introduce him as fat piece of shit robert kelly like so right. um so people liked it it was really good but bick let it get to his head really desperately it, it became a very oh, really? funny thing and he then he went on the subreddit to try and like he was on every single post about the documentary and saying yeah i i helped on that as well i had and people were like yeah shut up faggot kind of thing and then yeah. um Eventually, he he wasn't getting any recognition, so he went directly to Jim, and this was after Jim addressed the documentary finally, where Jim talked about it in a very kind way, because, let's be honest, there was no other way Jim could have dealt with it. He had to be right. nice about it, so Bick let it get to his head, and he, he sent he sent Jim Norton a direct message saying, oh, I'm so glad you, you like it. Me and Porcelain are both really big fans, like, including me in this thing. He's like, me and Porcelain are really big fans, and we're, uh, we're, so, psyched, we're so stoked that you like it. And I read it, and I was like, Bick, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you lumping me in with this? Why now you've just taken you've just you've just ruined the whole bit now and, and you've just yeah. crashed it into a wall. So I said to Bick, um, I immediately like took a screenshot of the thing and put it onto the subreddit. And uh the funny, oh, funny. The, the funny thing is like Bick has always he's been trying to become a thing on the subreddit for so long, and then finally he gets like a day where he's kind of liked, and now everybody just everybody hates him. People were trying to dox oh, him boy. and shit, but like it was. Um, he's been. Uh, he's very upset about that. But yeah. So I think the subreddits yeah, that, are kind of like you got to give them a reason to a, to some degree. Well, you know the 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 last time that my, there was a lot of attention on me hmm. was when I I don't know if you wrote like a month or two ago I wrote on Twitter how like, <clears> this <throat> is when like this is when Opie and Anthony started fighting again a little bit. Right. Right. And uh, I wrote on Twitter that you know everybody talks about Opie being a diva, but nobody realizes <laughs> or knows that you were literally not allowed to look Anthony in the eyes. And which is a true, it's a true story. Like when we, when we, I started interning, one of the rules, and it's not just from Sam, it's not just from Sam, it's not from mm. Travis. It was a general rule that you were not allowed to look Anthony directly in the eyes and you were not allowed to speak to him unless spoken to. Wow. What was and the, um, that, and what was that the justification that, for that? Well, and that was, well, I guess, the justification for it was he just didn't want to deal with any of us. Oh, okay. And, and mainly, like, what it was was in the morning when he would come in hungover or still awake, mm. he just he didn't want to hear anybody speak to him. Okay. So we would literally walk in, and we all we were allowed to do was hold our hand out, and he would give us money for his breakfast, and we would go get it, and we'd bring it back without saying anything. <laughs> now I wrote, I wrote. Now I, that is that is a true story. Oh and God. I wrote that I wrote that on Twitter. Everybody talks about Open being a diva, but nobody knows this. And it immediately was screenshotted and put up on the subreddit. Yeah. And it was like <laughs> within ten minutes, I was a faggot. I was a piece of shit. I was an <laughs> attention seeking whore. And then there was another another thread about my wife. Oh. And God. It, it just immediately. And then Anthony DM'd me. Like it it mm. was it was insane. And I just went ahead and deleted like six months worth of tweets. Because wow. I, I don't have time or interest in mm. engaging in an internet war with anybody. And it, it's just, and I was just like, this is fucking ridiculous. So, yeah. like, then I, like, avoided the subreddit for a few days. And then I, I like, check back. You know, I'm on there, like, on, you know, once every couple of days. And it's mm. just like, okay, I think, I think the tide has turned. They're on to something else now. Yeah. They, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they are like magpies. If you shine at something jingly in front of them, they'll go after that kind of thing. In a, in a very, like... I mean, in a in a nice way. I'm not trying to demean them in any sort of sense because uh, right. if they heard me say that, I'm sure I'll be the faggot tomorrow. So, like, oh yeah, no, it's, it's insane. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, again, like uh, when it comes to that, I mean, the, 
even even the, the the doxing, the going after wives and things like that, like in your instance, that's absolutely reprehensible. And and I think even to the majority of the subreddit, that they're, they're not into that. They're not. From what I've seen, and again, I've been sort of posting every day for like five years, and from what I've seen, like that usually gets downvoted or removed from the mods and stuff. So right. that's that's not what the majority of the subreddit are into. It's just that there are there are a couple of people on there that take it way too far. That okay. think that. Well, I feel like I feel like doing this. I might I might turn the tide in my favor a little bit <laughs> oh no abs dude absolutely i'm i'm um I, not I've got... that it's like super important to me for a subreddit full of strangers to like me i know, I but, know but... I just, <laughs> you understand where i'm coming from <laughs> but at the, at the same time like i said this was an important part of your life i mean this the, you were you were a part of the op and anthony show one of the biggest radio shows that are, that are at least if not biggest one of the best radio shows in my opinion that, that there have been and uh you were you know, a very big part of it in, the, in a you want to know something that i'm proud of mm -hmm. and and uh, you know, I this I almost feel like I feel a little weird just saying it. Yeah. But I'm extremely proud of the fact that that whatever that ma I forget what magazine ran the 20 best moments in Opie and Anthony history for their 20th oh, yeah, anniversary, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the Baby Bird was the number one moment. Wow. Now that that is something that I am extremely proud of. Yeah. And I, I just like I I to me that's a very positive thing regardless of how gross it was and all mm. that stuff i i'm very very proud of that and, and it's just like to me i think that's cool and let's think uh, you know that, if sam's yeah. anywhere near that top 20 or or like it's more specifically if if if, if something as a direct result of sam is anywhere near that top 20 it isn't because sam no. provides nothing he's not a con he's not content and this is right. this is why Fans like myself of the show, and obviously I'm in England, so I don't get to listen to Sirius, but I used to catch all, I, uh, about, I started getting into it about like eight years ago when uh, uh, Stephen Knight used to post the clips to YouTube. So right, I right. would I would catch a lot of it, and uh, I went through and listened to some of the archives of, especially like your incidents. And um, from my perspective, that's what made the show great. The, 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 the people like yourself that were just willing to, to just say yes and, and just let, let the show be the show and not try and, but Sam just wasn't an element at all, which I necessarily enjoyed, like, in any... I mean, even Jocktober, and I'll, I'll get to Jocktober next, because um, Sam gets a lot of credit on the subreddit and in, on Twitter as, as, as a kind of, like, a main driving force for Jocktober. Now, Danny said to me yesterday that that's not necessarily fair, because Sam was just the guy that volunteered to get all the clips, and essentially Jocktober was kind of a... It was it was a radio bit to allow the uh, to allow Opie and Anthony to just phone it in for an hour until ten. So that so I get Jocktober, that. Jocktober Jocktober was also a a group effort, mm -hmm. and in Jock, Jocktober was a group effort. I think that all those guys kind of thought of it, and then Sam became the face of it, right, and then right. he he saw the opportunity to take the credit. Sure. Along with also along with what's do you remember what's the haps? I remember what's the haps. Yeah. The Sam Sam Roberts street interviews. Yeah, I've I've that, got plenty of those, and they are cringe. <laughs> oh, they so are cringe. absolutely they are. Now, they, I'll tell you I'll tell you a story about that. Mm -hmm. That that was uh that was a brainchild of Steve C, and really? he wanted someone, he wanted someone to do on the street interviews. He called the man on the street interviews, mm -hmm. and he wanted someone to do those. I did one with hip hop Ron, hip hop mm. Ron and I went out and did a couple interviews with people and they never got played and they, they just never made it. They, they never made it to the top of the pile that, you know, it, mm. whatever, you know, a lot of things like that went the way of the, the garbage can. Mm. Now the man on the street interviews then were, I, I think Steve C was like, let's try this again, Sam, why don't you try it? And then he came up with the, what's the hap concept. And that's where that came from. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not like Sam just decided one day that he's going to go out on the street and interview people. Like, it, it was just, and then it, the way that he acted with it was that, oh, he came up with it. He's the first person to ever interview people on the street. Mm. Please praise praise me, praise me, praise me. That's just yeah. how that was with him. It wasn't even his his concept or idea, but he'll take all the credit for it. I remember one of them, uh, him in, him being in the uh, iPhone 5 line, uh, interviewing people right. for that. And uh yeah, I don't. I don't know. Um, I mean, not to, not to diss Steve C's uh, creative ideas, but I don't know who that's for. I, I did not find any of those what's the haps things interesting. Apart, aside from laughing at how cringe Sam is as an interviewer, but um, yeah, that that wasn't. Um, but the Jocktober thing, like you said, is is especially um, poignant because 
again, this this wasn't his child, and Danny said the same thing that that it wasn't necessary. It could have been anybody doing what Sam did. It's just that Sam plastered his face on it to to try Jock-tober, and. Jocktober, Jocktober always bothered me because, and this might sound stupid, mm. but it always bothered me. To it always bothered me when they made fun of people that were genuinely trying. Hmm. And I, you know, I don't know if I'm empathetic or sympathetic to people, but if from my perspective, from where I was in that whole world, here were people that had fully paid radio jobs mm-hmm. and they were just, they were doing their job and they were, they were doing the best with what they had. Not everybody had five hours of practically uninterrupted time to curse and make fart jokes all day. Yeah. You know, people had to follow formats of regular radio. And I never liked Jocktober because I always felt that, well, you know, in cert- when you can take anything and put it out of context and make it sound bad. Yeah. And, and that was Sam's job. And Sam took so much delight in these people trying to do their job. And they're, they're literally trying to make an effort. And, you know, and the way that I look at stuff like this, this might be just who I am, but these people are putting food on their table. Sure. And these people are, these people, you know, yeah, okay, regular radio, it sucks. I get it. But it's the time that we live in, and it is it's it is a product of the environment. These people right, are working. Right. They're going to work. They're putting food on their table. They're doing the best that they can. And this little snot-nosed shit is <laughs> taking all of their context, all the, all their stuff, and taking it out of context and going, hey, 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 look how stupid they are. They're so mm. stupid. And I, I used to cringe at that, and I, I couldn't stand it. And I never, and I, I was asked to find clips for shows. I never did. Mm. I just was like, oh yeah, sorry, I didn't get to it. I just, I never ever went for that. I never helped them with it. I never suggested anything, just because it, it always bothered me. You know, and yeah, it might sound stupid, but no, it always bothered not. me. I think, um, and you, you're treading on somewhere where I do actually want to go uh, heavily into uh, with the documentary, in that. To me, Jocktober, there are funny moments in it, of course. If you, if you, if you have that kind of a morbid sense of humor that, that uh, you, you, you can't not laugh at some, some of it. Uh, but you've got it. Oh, no, look, there, there are moments, of course. When you peel back the layer, like you said, especially with, with somebody like Terry Clifford, um, when you start peeling back the layer and realize that this is just this is just an, uh, an elder woman who's kind of like, she's in radio. Like, the people that are listening to her show, they're not Opie and Anthony fans. They're just people that want something gone in the background or... Uh, right, it's it's really, and then to to, to like sort of nu- go nuclear, knowing that you're going to be sending pests after her to make photoshops, yeah. to raid her oh. Facebooks and things like that, and um, a bit of inside inside thing here. I don't know if you know the guy Tef Patton. Um, he uh, yeah. he runs, he, so he runs. Uh, he's one of the mods on the ONA server. But he, he also runs. Um, the 24/7 uh, ONA streams on YouTube, and he does a couple of other things and stuff. He's uh, uh, in the ONA fan community. He's kind of um, it sounds stupid saying he's a big name, but like as far as like in the ONA community of fans, he he kind of is. Um, it was <laughs> a bit of inside baseball, but he was he was discovered, and it's it's absolutely uh, absolutely 100 true. But Terry Clifford is actually his mom, and oh, um, geez. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's insane. So basically, what uh, we, we we found out through a newspaper, uh, someone sent a newspaper article of of like Terry's husband and children and stuff, and then found his name, and then found a lot of childhood pictures of this guy with his mom, and then like grown up and stuff, and then Google Plus accounts with his name and his face there with the same name as Terry Clifford's husband. Yeah, so he, eventually he was in a corner. He said, "Look, yeah, okay, Terry is my mom, but uh, um, I was into ONA back in '06, and then the." The Jocktober thing happened, and he he would talk about how uh, Terry was. Um, she would come home and she burst out crying the first day that that happened, and he had to console her and everything. And and it sounds like it sounds like it's a joke, but it's absolute. I, again, I I can't tell you the 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 num the the amount of evidence that that people found that this is true. And the guy straight up uh, talks about it for like about an hour to us all, and uh, it's hearing from that side of it of of what they had to go through and she got better and better the years went on as far as how to deal with this but just knowing it's there every single day and this is a woman that's just trying to put food on the table this is a woman that's just literally just trying to do a thing and of course Opie and Anthony uh, as presenters and and as as guys that run the show they're responsible to a degree but I the fact that Sam delighted so much in making Jocktober and the fact that Sam uh, volunteered for it and, and went out his way to find these clips knowing that 
OP and Anthony were going to laugh at it. And he's the, I mean, he's the guy that, uh, along with um, some of the background stuff, that found the Terry Clifford stuff in the first place. And he ruined her life. And that, to yeah. me, feeds into the sociopathic nature of Sam. It feeds, to me, as well, into the the bullying nature of Sam. I think Sam, uh, how he treated you, I'm sure how he treated interns as well that you've probably witnessed there. There's a bully element to Sam as well, a, a pile-on bully kind of thing where it's sociopathic. And um, and th th that's definitely one of the reasons why I, I chose to do this thing in the first place. No, and you're absolutely right. And it's, at the end of the day, Sam doesn't care what he did to Terry Clifford. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. I bet he never even thinks about it. And, he, and you know what? At the time, he you know he was just providing content, and it he made you know other people laugh, and that was it. But he didn't give a shit about the real life consequences of what he was doing. Mm. And it's the same thing about like fucking with me. Like you know, I'm the type of person that I, I would you know I would try and do my best, go back and forth with him, and, right. and try my best. But I would I would as I shouldn't have, but I would take it personally. Right. And there I'd be at home laying in bed in my. I lived above a garage in a single room that had no heat, mm -hmm. and I literally would I would sit there in a sleeping bag, waiting oh to go waiting to take the train at three o'clock in the morning, to go back to do it all over again, and I'd be sitting there thinking about that fucking guy, oh and God. and the stuff that he said to me, and oh you know maybe this guy really does hate me, maybe he thinks I am stupid, maybe I am stupid, you know, and, and it just it, it never bothered him and. You know, like like I like I told you like I told you yesterday, when I used to do the Saturday Night Virus show, mm -hmm. I would run I would run the board, I would take calls, and it was the first time that Danny, he would trust me enough to do that and mm -hmm. to really run that and actually run a show with him. Right. And I, I took it I took it serious, and I I thought it was a great opportunity, and I was like finally somebody seeing the fact that I can do something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Sam would come in every once in a while with Jess, his wife, and he, I would sit there and I'd immediately clam up. Right. And right. he'd be like, he's like, how's the board going? Oh, your levels look okay, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well, that one's going in the red a little bit. You might want to back that one down. Right. And right. he would just be all over me. And then he'd leave the room and Jess would say to me, you know, I, I really don't know why Sam does this to you. Uh, I'm really sorry. And I would say it's okay, Jess. You know, it is what it is. It's just how it is. I've I've really asked him to stop, and he won't. Hmm. I'm really sorry. And I I just I remember thinking to myself like, if this guy's own wife can't get him to back off of me, I'm just doomed. And, and you know, and it was just like it, it was terrible. And hmm. I remember that at the time MySpace was real big, mm -hmm. and uh, somebody took a picture of me running the board i think it might have right. been sean the butcher took a picture of me running the board and they, and they sent it to me and i was like oh this is cool you know there i am new york city radio station running a board right you right. know and and I, I i i like to i this is gonna sound hack but i used to like to caption my my photographs on myspace with song titles right and, no, i remember that being a big thing yeah yeah and i listened to i used to listen to a lot of different music and i used to, I, was, I remember going through a grateful dead kick Mm -hmm. And I, I captioned it one more Saturday night, which mm -hmm. is a is a dead is a dead song. And I remember Sam literally pulled up my picture and had it on. He's like, "Oh yeah, right, one more Saturday night, right? Like you're like you're a real professional. Oh, one more God. Saturday night, yeah." And I remember just like just feeling stupid <laughs> for like for feeling good. Yeah, you know, and and, the, and it was like. I remember, I, I remember just thinking to myself, if we were in any other situation, and mm -hmm. if I had, if I didn't have so much riding on my every move here, mm -hmm. I would fucking murder him. Like, I've never in my life met a guy like Sam, and mm -hmm. I've certainly never tolerated a guy like Sam. And if, if I ever run into anybody that even remotely reminds me of Sam now, I just, I, I cut off all contact. Like I, you know what I mean? I don't even, yeah. I don't even give the time of day. The funny like, thing is, I, I the weird irony is that if you did that, if you just landed a, a, a hit on him, like in studios, like it would have been the best moment of ONA history, and you would have gone down in because your feelings towards him they were mirrored by everybody that was listening, and there were sure Sam fans out there, but they 
it was at least the people that that could tell that kind of situation was happening. Like it would have, mm. we would have loved you for it. It would have been one of oh, the best yeah. moments. And um, yeah, I mean, almost... I think people still people still look at that video and they think, oh man, what if? Yeah, they do. You know, and it's it's like in a guy like Poe, who took me down, and mm-hmm. and I and and Poe was a Sam victim through and through. Right. Here's Poe, a guy who takes his martial arts real serious. You know, the guy's a little goofy. I get it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it, but you know, they obviously hired the guy because he had that personality. Mm-hmm. And you know, here and then the moment that he, he could be made fun of, Sam would rip Poe apart at all. And here's a guy who. Tra- was trained to do his job held me back i was i was physically trying as hard as i could to get out of his grasp mm-hmm. and he was holding me expertly and he's if you look at the video which i haven't seen in a long time he he is literally talking in my ear he's saying to me i know how bad you want this i'm not going to let you do this wow and he goes we all he literally said to me we all want you to do this <laughs> everybody wants he goes everybody wants you to do what you want to do but I like you too much. I'm not going to let you do it. Yeah, because at that point, and it's not just your job as well. You know, it's an assault charge, and you know, Sam's the. It's kind an of assault guy charge. It's my job. It's it's literally everything that I had been working towards would have been gone. Now, in retrospect, that that fight was the reason I never got hired. Hmm. It it it, it, it I, I was never directly told that that's mm. the reason, but I I surmised it after a while. I and I figured a, it out. I think it's a pretty likely conclusion. I think the um, at the end of the day, that between the two of you, they're probably always going to be choosing, picking Sam to stay. And if it if it's going to cause unfair, it's it's one thing to be doing to have that kind of a relationship with Sam as an intern. But the minute it's a the minute you're on the payroll and there's a stuff, it it can become like a HR issue if down the line something happens. But yeah, I I, I think that definitely did cement uh, the decision. No, that was to, it. And That's and high, yeah. and everything after that, everything after that that I was working for was basically mm. like I was on, I was just there, like I wasn't working towards anything anymore. Right, right. And and in retrospect, it's really heartbreaking because, mm. you know, I I pride myself on trying to be able to control myself, and I just I couldn't that day, I had just had it. It's frustrating like, because you. Yeah. You, you, you. Who knows where you could have? I mean, look at where Sam is now. And if not for Sam, who knows where your ceiling was? Who knows where your potential might have led you in that industry? And right. because of one person, and it, with you, I think the example is it is because largely of one person. Because of that one person, Sam, who made your life there a misery, um, you were denied something that you probably could have had a lot of potential in, and you could have really enjoyed and fulfilled you. I mean. As chance happened, you ended up uh, married with with kids, and you, you've gone down a completely different path, which is fantastic. Really good news. But again, you just you've always got that what if, and and that what if is all down to one person. And and for me, I yeah. can't imagine how how sad that is f- for you. Um, and it's it's it, like I said, like I said to you earlier, and I've kind of touched on it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. I was really really angry at the end, and when mm-hmm. I was let go, sure. like I was really angry, probably more angry than I've ever been about thing. Sure. And I remember like the first couple weeks afterward, uh, after I separated, I, you know, I did a lot of drugs. I drank a lot. Mm-hmm. I was really depressed and it took me a long time to pick myself back up from the whole thing. But it, it took me a very long time to just let the anger go. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it all, it really, it, it basically, I had to sit there and the face of the anger towards Sirius XM and towards my time there was Sam. Right, right. And it, he was the face of my anger. And I, I really had to just let it go. And I've never spoken. I haven't spoken to the guy since. I haven't done anything. Like I've called in a few times here and there, mm-hmm. spoken to him on the phone here and there. He was doing the after show. Right. And right. I remember speaking to him then. And, and I just, I had to just let it go. Right, and it was hard. It was really hard, and, and you know, I look back on the now. Like you said, now I have married. I have two children. I, I own a house. I am incredibly mm-hmm. happy. Right, like I have a great job. I love my job. I, I you know, I am really, really fulfilled. Mm-hmm. But there is always that what if part of me. Sure, and and there always is like, oh, you know, I, I wonder what I could have done. I wonder what could have happened. You know, but it just these, these are things that happened in the past. So you just have to let it go. Sure, sure. 
Um, so. Just a fi final question, um, which might not necessarily result in any kind of answer because I'm, I'm sure you don't tune in. But uh, in your opinion, is is Sam? A t does he have the talent for this? Is he a good broadcaster? Do you? Uh, what are your thoughts on on him in in a sort of like a first or second mic basis? Um, uh, for me personally, mm -hmm. I would never tune into a Sam Roberts show, regardless if I had a past history with the guy, regardless if I had never met him. Yeah, what he's into and what he's about and his background does not click with me. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't relate to it. I, I've never been a privileged kid that got a full <laughs> ride to a college and all that. I've, I've just I've never been that person. Yeah. So I personally would if I didn't know Sam from from Adam, I would never have tuned into anything. That being said, like I said earlier, Sam is very quick with it. Sam yeah. is Sam is a smart. You know, I hate you know, I hate to say it. Sam's a smart guy. You know, he knows what he's doing, but I think that Sam is catering to an audience full of people that have absolutely nothing in common with him. I think so too. And I, I think that if Sam went on, you know, something like, uh, like when he, he, like he does the wrestling show, mm -hmm. you know, I think that he appeals to more or less like that type of person, like, like the smarter than everybody basement dweller type person, <laughs> the neck beard type person. <laughs> <laughs> the neck beard. Like yeah. I, I, I think that Sam relates to and connects with people that are more like that. Now, the majority of the people that listen to Opie and Anthony or Opie and Jim or even, I guess, to a lesser extent, Jim and Sam, mm -hmm. are guys that are driving to work. You know, they're right, guys right. that are driving a truck for a living. Guys mm -hmm. that are, you know, I hate to even use this phrase, the salt of the earth. <laughs> you know, like I, I hate, to, yeah. I seriously hate to say that. But oh, like okay. it, they're just like they're just normal people, and that's why people hate Sam so much, because people will people will listen to Jim and Sam because they mm. they like Jim, yeah. yeah and then there's this there's this fucking kid cackling in the background about <laughs> wrestling, and you know, and he. So to answer your question, mm. I, I think that Sam sure he might have a shred of talent. But I think that it is completely pointed in the wrong direction. I think so too. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I, I think that I I think there in no other point in history would Sam have ever gotten a job. I, yeah. I, in, in you take any point in history going back to the invention of radio, when Marconi invented radio, he didn't want Sam Roberts on it. <laughs> like, I'll put it to you that way. Like. <laughs> In no, in no decade or time or place in history does Sam Roberts deserve to be sitting in front of a microphone. I fundamentally but, agree. But by her, by happenstance and by, like Danny said, being in the seat, mm -hmm. it allowed him to be where he is. Exactly. And there are 10 million other people that could do it, mm -hmm. and, they, and they would want to do it. If somebody called me tomorrow and said, Sam got fired, do you want to try out with Jim? I'd go make a couple of dick jokes for an hour and see if it worked. Oh, absolutely. You know what I mean? It, it, and it's just, it's, it, it, no, it's just, he doesn't, he, it's almost like he's a bench warmer waiting for mm. a professional to come in. Yeah. It seems, it seems like he's filling that seat for somebody else. And I'm, I'm sure that right. somebody else is, is, is maybe an Anthony of Jim leaves Sirius or, or whatever other, um, amalgamation of people I, th I think with sam i think if he, if he if his show was targeted to the demographic of which he's very interested in the wrestling world and the tmz chicken finger fucking world uh then <laughs> perhaps then perhaps he can have some semblance of a of an okay show but i think if you talk if you're talking about I, I think you people really underestimate the uh importance of a of a vocal cadence and a, of a a, a way of presenting that Sam absolutely doesn't have. His voice is very shrill, very irritating. Right. And um, and as far as, you know, a, a radio presenter captivating the audience, like the Howard Stern types who, who can make a boring thing seem interesting. Sam, right. I don't know if you've listened to the Jim and Sam show much, but I've, I've been through, I said this to Danny yesterday, that I, I gave it a really, really good shot because I didn't have anything else entertaining me at the time. So I was like, you know what? I don't really like Sam, but it's Jim. It might work. It might be a weird thing. And I gave it a good couple of years. I even used to stream the show to people and um, to people that didn't have serious and stuff. And 
every show you just found yourself getting angrier and angrier at the things he would talk mm-hmm. about angrier at the guests angrier at his nonsense takes he would traverse this middle ground uh culturally or politically speaking where he wouldn't take either side or he didn't necessarily have any strong opinions on anything that wasn't wwe right. related so it just got to the point where why am i listening to this this is and and even if you just say okay well i'll listen to it for like radio background you know uh, uh, you, you, if you want to do that, you need someone with like these dulcet, like nice radio tones, like a, like a Howard Stern again. Like he's, you can do that with Howard. You can't do it with a right. shrill, crow-like, nagging, horrible right. cackle in your ear. Like it's impossible. Now the the only thing I the only thing I listen on Faction Talk now, I guess, is what the mm-hmm. channel's called. Yeah. The only thing that I listen to is Bennington, and yeah. I listen, I listen for about forty minutes every day when I drive home from work, mm-hmm. and. In in the, in the, I get out of work at four o'clock in the afternoon. Now in that time when it's live, mm-hmm. I usually catch right when they're on break and they come back until five o'clock. Yeah. Now nine times out of ten, they play a promo for Jim and Sam. <laughs> now when I I remember when they used to do Opie and Anthony promos or even Ron and Fez promos, mm-hmm. and it was like they would they would select like the funniest recent clip. Right. Right. And they're still following that formula with Jim and Sam except the clips that they have are literally nothing <laughs> like they're 10 seconds of nothing yeah and and it's like and I, and I get you know my my wife makes fun of me because I, I, I listen to the radio and I get mm. mad because I, I criticize <laughs> I criticize the way things are done on the radio and I I mm. get mad at people's radio voices and things like that and you know and it bothers me and then I listen to stuff like that and I, I just like this is there's literally nothing here like that wasn't <laughs> funny. Like yeah, why I mean, are you I mean, prom- why are you attempting to promote a show that is just simply not funny? Yeah. Like it, it's just it, it blows my mind. Forget firefighters. I think the hardest job in America right now is finding highlights for Jim and Sam. I think that's uh, <laughs> they're I the real they're, they're the heroes, real heroes. You know? Yeah, forget nine eleven. <laughs> this is the real nine eleven right now. Trying to trying to find something out of there to uh, to go. Okay, Pat. I think I'm going to wrap it up there because uh, we've been going out here a while, and I've, I've absolutely got some fantastic. Like, honestly, I think you're going to be yeah, very happy this, with this. Was this okay? I mean, dude, it was great. Honestly, it was. Danny was good, but but it was very much uh, Danny's um, not massively opinionated on Sam to this degree because he 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 wasn't personally affected by him too much. He, he was very good in a sense of like he was a good uh, window into seeing the world, and he he let me know of some of the things that happened. But to to hear from you talking about it with with your take, your direct relationship with him is absolutely invaluable, and it's it's going to be something I, I definitely uh, lean on a lot in the documentary. I think it's, it's going well, to be I, really I, well I got I got to be honest with you. I, this is like a bit of a therapy session for me. Yeah, no, cool, because, man. I'm glad. Because, be, well, you know, like, <laughs> I'll, I'll talk for another 10 minutes here, but hmm. I to make it to make it short, yeah. I, I, I don't ever talk about this. And yeah, I mean, it, how it's, can it's you? It's one of those things. Well, yeah, it, I mean, nobody gets it. You know, yeah. and, like, my wife, I met my wife way after all of this and, mm-hmm. and like she looks at it and she goes you got a prostate exam on the radio you know like <laughs> and, and she you know and, and she it's it's hard for me to get her to understand and i don't even mm. try yeah you know yeah. and and for a guy like you a guy who i respect mm-hmm. and who to, to ask me about this type of thing it, it's it's very therapeutic for me because i just simply don't talk about it and it feels right. good to talk about it you know oh, and, and imagine it's just you know and, and i hope I hope I gave you something good here. It was great. Because, yeah, honestly, it's, because it's, personally, it's been I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if it pisses Sam off. You know, <laughs> I, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit if they talk about it on the air and they rip me apart. You know, I don't give a mm. shit. Like, you know, you know how easy it is to just not listen. Yeah, like, it's very. It, it, I, I don't have time for that. Well, uh, Jim know? and Sam like, listeners are used to not listening. They've been tuning out for uh, for the last year now. So, um, I, I hear that uh, there's rumors that Sirius are low-balling them with offers and I mean so I can't it, imagine they're going to give it resigned but I, that's I just me. really hope they don't I I, I don't mean <laughs> that in a nasty I, I like Jim enough to say that I want him to do something but Sam I I I hope they just put him in a corner in Sirius and never let him on the air again because right. he, he doesn't have talent for this and he sounds like the one of the worst people he just 
and I'm not trying to be hyperbolic here. I'm, I, I'm not like uh, just a Sam hater, but just listening to you and then all of the the because I've already done quite a lot of the documentary. It's already in, uh, it's already in Adobe Premiere and it's already kind of ready to go. And the amount that I've had to look at Sam um, for this. <laughs> It's put me in a complete weird headspace where I, I can't stand even looking at him now. Oh now, yeah. So uh, I'm, no, I, I'll tell you. I, I'll tell you. I, I yeah. like. I hear those promos and I just turn it off. Like I'll I'll, I'll mute my radio <laughs> for a minute. Like I just can't do it. Like it's like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah, man. And I, I just I can't, can't do it. Imagine. It's just I, the 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 like I get like a quick like flash of a million memories that come through <laughs> that like I could like try to like I could try to explain them to you and like try to get mm. you to understand like why why that bothered me but it wouldn't make any sense you know what i mean exactly. i get like i, I get like this like slideshow of memories mm. and then i'm just like oh god i <laughs> fucking hate that guy like and it's just so like you exactly. know I, I know you're trying to go but i just want you to know that, that this is really this was mm. great for me i'm glad man, i'm that, really glad like, i hope you have i hope you have something good here i have great things thanks again pat and uh and take it easy man i am well hey, done no with the problem. family and, and all that stuff as well like, i'm really happy to hear oh, that thanks, uh, things are going thanks well. man just uh, hey keep in touch man i, I will do man yeah I, I i like what you're doing and uh, you know hopefully we can turn the tide on subreddit and i'll, I'll <laughs> you know, go over there more did you you're fine <laughs> on there believe me like I, you, yeah show <laughs> hey, your when, face uh, a bit more you, you're fine there all right. When do you think that this will um, see the light of day? It's uh, I'm about a week away. I've just posted to my Patreon, right, cool. so I'm a week away from it right now. So um, these things are usually the gym one took a um, lot less. It was about eight days in total for the gym one. So this is probably a oh, little okay. bit longer than that, but about a week and, and it'll be up. All right. Very cool, man. I look forward to it. Cool, man. Catch you later, Pat. Hey, thanks, bud. I'll talk Bye. to you later.